Private John Anderson Aurora Crute cleans his musket while another soldier's wife cleans out the grate. Oh, totally messed it up. 40 men would stay in here. And that's the fireplace there in the corner. Talking about um, the design of the castles changed as um, oh. military technology and kind of innovations increased in their life. It started off with arrows and they had high thin walls to protect them. Um, we're standing in a soldier's barrack room as it would have looked in the year 1780, shortly after the fort was fully operational. Private John Anderson, Aurora Crute, cleans his musket, while another soldier's wife cleans up the grate. The ever-increasing size of the British Army in the 18th century put enormous pressure on the few barracks then available. The men slept two to a bed, eight to a room. In those days, there were no communal messing toilet or recreational facilities. The men drew their rations from the provision stores and cooked for themselves. One in a hundred men was allowed to marry on the strength, with his wife and children living in and receiving half rations in exchange for doing domestic chores. The only privacy they had was a blanket shutting off their corner of the barrack room. This room may seem small and uncomfortable to us, but actually, in the 18th century, it was among the most comfortable accommodation a soldier could expect. Most troops lived in tents or were billeted in taverns or stables. Proper barracks were still the exception, and Fort George was clearly ahead of its time. Maybe. However, there was room for improvement. You'll see how things had changed 100 years on. Within a soldier's barrack room in the year 1868, Private George Moffat, recently enlisted in the Cameron Highlanders, is reading a letter from his sister in Edinburgh. The contrast between this room and the rank and file room across the corridor is striking. By this date, married quarters had been acknowledged by the army authorities as a necessity. So too had the requirement for communal messing, toilet and recreational facilities outwith the barrack rooms. As a result, the amount of space per man is almost doubled and the atmosphere within the room greatly improved. There are now just five men to the room sleeping in single beds. The close of the 19th century saw official recognition of the needs of the rank and file. Schools were established for soldiers and their offspring, libraries and day rooms were introduced into barracks, saving schemes were set up and sports facilities were provided. The rank and file soldier was encouraged to do anything but be idle and drink. So this is how common soldiers would have lived. But what about officers? Walk over to the last room. We're going back in time again. This room is chronologically between the two rooms we've just seen. This is a senior officer's quarters in the year 1813, at the height of the Napoleonic Wars. Major Andrew Coughlin, the commanding officer here at the fort, is seen at his desk writing out the orders for the following day. Major Coughlin's room stands in marked uh -huh. contrast to the barrack rooms of the rank and file. It's distinctly more spacious and lighter, with larger window panes and other little flourishes like window shutters and a window seat, a mantelpiece and wood panel doorway. The room, though, isn't luxurious. The life of an officer was as uncertain as that of his men, and his pay barely sufficient to keep him in the manner expected of him by his regiment. All he possessed had to be capable of being transported from campaign to campaign, hence the travelling chest and trunk. Nowadays, soldiers sleep three to a room, and barrack rooms are originally designed for eight, and all of the married quarters are outside the fort. You gonna come with us? Okay, bye-bye.